Yeah, you're very welcome along to our featured uh, Daisha Og piece uh, this week where we're going to focus on the Waterford under-15 football squad who've been uh, working hard behind the scenes and they're in action in Dr. Morris Park Thurless this Saturday where they're in action against uh, two Tipperary teams at 11am and 12 noon on uh, Saturday and to fill us in on how preparations are going. Uh, delighted to be joined on the line by the Waterford under-15 football manager. That's uh, Michael Murphy now from the Clonagale Club, uh, Clonagale Club even, excuse me. First of all, Michael, thanks for joining us appreciate it yeah no problem um, I suppose as we've been chatting to various managers and squads over the last couple of weeks Michael first of all I suppose just great to be back and maybe you might give us an outline of, of how things have gone in terms of, of year squads since you got back collectively there maybe in uh, early June yeah I suppose um, this particular group like the under 15s they've, they've probably missed out more than anyone really because um, you know we had our squad selected at the start of 2020 there, um, and all the lads were looking forward to, to representing their county for the first time at, at under-14 level. And uh, we started with a training in January February, and obviously then COVID broke, and the world went nuts, you know. Uh, and these, these crowds, this crowd of lads, then they've, you know, they've missed a lot of important stuff. They've, they've missed their junior search, you know, they probably missed their first disco, they've, they've missed the gym power tournaments, they've missed Fela, you know. Um, so I suppose all all through 2020 we we try to keep them we try to keep the squad together and keep it connected um, in in this new mad world that we had um, via Zoom calls and we did online strength and conditioning um, we did a bit of um, video analysis clips and that of, of all matches and discussing it with them and we set them skills challenges where they had to perform a skill and post videos and that up on the on the group chat um, but I suppose the one thing that that they are enjoyed was uh, we set them little life skills as well you know uh, little life challenges you know where they had to um, the lads had to go on with the iron a shirt or uh, do a load of washing or change a duvet cover or right, sew right. a feed or make the dinner or you know one of them had to make an omelette I think he nearly burnt down the kitchen and nearly ended up in A&E but um, it was just it was just to keep things fresh you know and keep it keep it interesting because there was so much uh, serious stuff going on I suppose on the news and everything that we wanted to uh, we wanted these lads to, to enjoy their time with with uh, with the development squad, you know. Um, like my own my own thinking would be that you don't have to uh, you can take something seriously and still have a bit of fun doing it, you know. You don't have to have the the hundred yards right keen stare to to take elite sport seriously, you know. And uh, that's what we were trying to to instill in the lads, you know. And it's worked to a certain degree, you know. We have great engagement with them, and uh, they're all they're all still involved. We have um, with thirty two players representing twelve clubs. And um, you know they're all they're an amazing bunch of young fellas. There's, there's great characters in them, and um, they all want to play for Waterford, which is great. You know they all want to put on the jersey. Mm, yeah, it's absolutely super. It's a fascinating um, insight, really. Actually, that and you know we pe- people I suppose forget about what you know these went through in terms of COVID and missing out. I suppose on collective training sessions and the work they've put in, Michael, behind the scenes to come back in, you know, fit and focused as well. You must have been really pleased with that. Yeah, we we were delighted and. Um, you know, this year um, in the development squad, there's, there's a lot of work being done with strength and conditioning, and we are very lucky that we have Joey Doherty and Owen Teague who have um, who've done some great work with the lads. Um, you know, we got all all through the first three or four months of the year there, we got to see Joey's bedroom every every Sunday evening um, as he was doing his, his strength and conditioning with the lads. Um, and uh, you know, it showed when they came back on the pitch. It showed when they came back on the pitch like they were all flying, you know, and they were all. We left them as boys uh, there at the start of 2020, and, and they came back as men um, in the middle of in the middle of uh, 21. There, you know, so yeah, some great work being done. Absolutely, super stuff indeed. Yeah, and on the uh, the strength and conditioning, of course, it's a new initiative that they show. And in fairness to the the lads there, have come up with, and every squad, I suppose, being assigned different mentors, and that uh, that's a really good project, I suppose, Michael. Not alone, I suppose, now, but even going forward as well down the line in terms of of other squads and that, and you know, building for the future, I suppose. It is, yeah. I mean, uh, Jerry Fitzpatrick is, is running it um, with his team there, and uh, to be fair, that that has been one of the probably one of the best initiatives that that they've started this year. You know, um, like if, you, if I read something there the other day that that Kerry they uh, they find footballers and they turn them into athletes, whereas some other counties, you know, they they find athletes and they try and turn them into footballers. But I think uh, you know you can't fault the Kerry approach. Like so, at the moment we've. We're trying to discover footballers and uh, through the strength and conditioning program then turn them into athletes and turn them into to guys that are able to compete at, at inter-county level, you know. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great initiative, a great S- program at the minute. Super stuff indeed and uh, you might give us an, an outline of uh, who else is involved with yourself there, uh, Michael, in terms of the, the management with the under-15 uh, footballers. 
Yeah, so we've uh, Dave Kennedy uh, from Golf here, uh, Dale Long from the Nair, uh, Mark Nugent from Clashmore, uh, he's now living in Dunhill, uh, Austin Dunn from De La Salle is doing um, stats and goalkeeper training, Shane Goff of Rack Gormuk is uh, secretary, and then as I said, we have Joey and Owen who are doing the, the strength and conditioning with them. Uh, so like, there's, there's a wealth of, of football knowledge there um, in that group. And every one of them, you know, the training sessions are, are great crack, but they're also, um, you know, there's an awful lot of football knowledge being imparted onto the lads. You know, so it's, it's great like to, to have people like that. Um, we also have uh, Paco Corndon is, is acting as a mentor to the to the squad. So he's uh, done a session with us already and uh, he's there at the end of the phone, you know, if we ever want a bit of advice. Uh, and obviously then Benji Whelan is, is uh, part of the the Deshog, um work group that's, uh, you know, organising everything behind the scenes. So, like, it's great to have all these these people, that uh, these football people that are, that are um, you know, they, they have a wealth of knowledge there and it's, it's available to them. So the lads, the squad, like, are very lucky to, to be getting all that sort of knowledge and advice passed on to them, you know. Yeah, and they certainly are key to driving it forward as well, I suppose. And came across you a couple of weeks ago, refereed your your, your games there against East Cork inside in Dungarvan. I think it was one of the hottest mornings, I suppose, uh, in, in quite a while. But, um, you know, very impressed, Michael, with the whole the attitude and, and their application that and, and got two wins, I think it was that day as well. So, you know, seemed to be a very united group and, um, as you say, great representation of, of clubs as well um, in the squad. Yeah, there is. There's... Um there's 12 clubs represented. We've 32 players on the squad, and there's 12 clubs uh, represented. But that that morning, yeah, it was a beautiful morning. We we actually brought them down to the uh, the pier there at the Gold Coast. After that, just to, to go jumping off the pier, have a bit of crack in that. So, uh, right, lovely. So some of the boys they could, they could represent Ireland at synchronised diving. <laughs> the Olympics, you know, they were so good that morning. But uh, there's a few of them were traumatised, all right, because they got to see their long and speedos that morning. So a couple of them I think will have nightmares for a while after that. You know. <laughs> he won't thank you for that. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> he's not bad at the diving himself no. he's not too yeah. bad at it no he's not too bad he's good and, good and loud anyway there's no doubt about that but um, I suppose overall then um, Michael looking ahead to, to this weekend you're in action there in Dr. Morris Park in Thurles uh, going to be taking on Tipperary opposition on Saturday as well so uh, no doubt another good test for the lads yeah it's great I mean we, we've um, we played Tip at, at under 13 level and uh, we'd won game against them at under 14 as I said before things were locked down and uh, we played them already this year uh, above in Limerick in our first day out um, and actually we've, we've performed pretty well against them now um, there's uh, as I said there's some brilliant footballers in this squad you know and um, they actually they surprised us really the first day out because we uh, we had a squad of just 32 I think and we decided we'd field two teams with maybe a bit tight and we thought maybe we were diluting things a bit too much but um, they went out on their first day out uh, against Limerick and Tipperary and they, uh, of the four games they played they won two, drew one and, and lost one and really only lost one because they were they were out on their feet you know um, but yeah no, this Saturday morning is going to be a great test now because um, it's Tipperary South and West we're playing which would be the, the stronger footballing part of the county you know so it'll be a good test yeah Good mm. test. Yeah, certainly will indeed. We wish you well with it indeed. And uh, I suppose just to do a wrap on it, um, Michael, you're delighted, of course, with the the lads in terms of what they're bringing to the table. And um, you know, no doubt this, you know, games, I suppose, will is what brings guys on. But um, you know, you're developing them for for next year under sixteen, and some of them pretty pushing maybe to get into a, a minor squad next year. So um, overall, you're happy with the the progress being made and and with the um the lads you have. Yeah, we're we're very happy with progress. Um, you know, I mean, as I said, the training is been very good. We're rotating the training between uh, the Gold Coast and uh, Carrigan Orr and uh, yeah, attendances have been have been very good, you know. Um, I mean, I suppose there's, there's maybe an attitude in Waterford that, that football is, is second best, uh, you know, and that uh, as a fellow, a fellow from Waterford, so, you know, he's not like a, a fellow from Kerry or a fellow from Dublin that he can't, he wouldn't be as good at football, but like the last time I checked, every Kerry lad and every Dublin lad only has two legs and two arms as well, you know, the same as anyone from Waterford, so I think this, um, you know, if, if if we kind of change our attitude a little bit in Waterford and, and you know, football the respect that it deserves and give these young footballers the respect they deserve, then you know, who knows what what we can achieve? Um, there is there's a lot of people around the county, yourself included, putting in massive effort into football, and uh, you know, it can only be good for the county. It can only be good for the county. We'll maybe we'll never compete with the Dublins and the Kerrys and that, but. Um, you know, we, uh, we should certainly be able to, to compete, we'll say, on the second tier in, in, from a football point of view anyway, you know. 
Absolutely, yeah. Nice uh, note to end on. No stone being left unturned, there's no doubt about that. Um, Michael Murphy, under 15, uh, Waterford Football Manager. Really appreciate you taking our time uh, to feature in our uh, section this week and the very best of luck now going forward as well. Thanks very much.